Your wing mirrors play a vital role in you being able to reverse your car backwards accurately. I'm in a car park and I want to reverse into the space behind. Let's take a look out the back window. Aha, uh -huh. well you can see that I can see very little. In fact, from the view out the back window, I wouldn't even know I'm in a car park, let alone be able to reverse between two lines. However, the left wing mirror shows me the line to the left of the car and the right wing mirror shows me the line to the right of the car. And I can also see the car, so that way I can guide the car between the lines. I'm now gonna show you how to use your mirrors to guide the car backwards. First tip is to lower the mirrors so that you can see the side of the car like so. You still wanna see backwards, so not too far down. Lower the other one as well. And this saves you stretching your head to see the side of the car, it makes it much easier when you're trying to learn to reverse because you take a lot longer to do things when you're learning, but more on this later. Now, I wanna get into this space here, which means I need to go towards this line because it's very far away. And as this line is on this side of the car, I'm gonna to steer towards this side of the car. I'm not saying left and right because that gets confusing when you're reversing. It's either this side or this side. <laughs> And if I'm teaching, I'll say my side or your side, because when you turn your head, left and right becomes opposite. Now, which way you steer is not opposite when you're going backwards. You may think this because you're thinking about the front of the car. And when you steer the car, when you're going backwards, the front of the car goes in the opposite direction to which way you're steering, which is why you shouldn't be steering the car from its front when you're reversing. You should be guiding the car from the rear using the mirrors so you can see the rear of the car. You want to be aware of the front of the car so that you don't hit anything when it swings out. So I wanna to go towards this line, so I'm gonna steer this way towards this side of the car. Select reverse, handbrake off, steering towards this side of the car, and you'll see the back starts to go towards the line. And now it looks like the back is touching the line, except it's not. It's nowhere near the line. You're near the line when the line is at the side of the car around here. You're merely pointing towards the line. In the same way that if you were to point at the moon, you may look like you're touching the moon, but you're not. You're only pointing towards it. When it's here, you'll be at the line. And I'm gonna prove that to you, not only via the exterior camera, you can see I'm quite far away, but I'm gonna try and straighten the car now. So I'm gonna straighten the car, and you'll see that the back of the car no longer points towards the line and I'm still really far away. Most new drivers make that mistake and they think, why am I so far away again? I'll show you how to sort that out. I'm gonna go back to where I come from, just pointing towards the line. That's good, you've got some angle now towards the line. That's what you want, angled at the line. Straighten the wheel now. The wheel needs to be straight and you need to come back in a straight line at this angle. Select reverse gear, look around and make sure it's safe and now you can see I'm getting closer to the line. When the line is around about here, then I know I'm close. Have another look around, it's been a little while, make sure no one's walking behind me. Nearly there, a little bit more, and I'd say I'm close around about now, maybe a little bit further forward, about there. See about that distance. Now, if I steer away from this line, that will straighten the car. Because I'm steering towards it, now I need to steer away. So that's the other way. So I'm gonna steer the other way now, have a look round, and you'll see the car will start to straighten within the lines, and you can compare the line in the other mirror as well to see how you've done. And when the car is straight, you simply straighten the wheel. If you want to double check, once you're straight, you can go forwards. That'll give you a better view of the line. Also, it will give you some time to make an adjustment. And if you think you wanna get closer to one of the lines, you can do that. Just select reverse, have a look round. I think I might wanna get a bit closer to this line, although I think it's quite even. Just a little bit, so I'll steer slightly towards that line till I'm a bit closer, and then straighten the car. There we go, and I'll stop when I'm in the space, which is about here. How I teach people to reverse into a bay is I go into a car park like this where there's bays on both sides. I get them to drive forwards into a bay or I will drive them forwards into a bay. And then I'll ask them to reverse into a bay behind on a different side. Let's turn those reverse sensors off. So I'll get them to lower the mirrors slightly so they can see the side of the car. And I'll say, I want you to try and get into this parking space here. 
And I'll often do the pedals at first as well, just to make it easier and just allow them to steer and learn how to steer using the mirrors. I'll even do the observations to make sure it's safe. This is a training exercise, not the end result. I find it really helps. So I'll get them to reverse back. Well, I'll do the reversing, I'll do the pedals. And I'll get them to try and steer into the bay, like so. And I'll be looking around regularly to make sure it's safe. And they don't get it first time, that's for sure. But with practice, they really start to learn how to steer the car backwards using the mirrors. And once they can do that, they can park anywhere. Here is another example. I'm trying to reverse along this curb, but I can't see where the curb is at the side of the car. All I can see is seat and door. And although I can see where the curb is at the back of the car, it's very hard to judge where the car is in relation to that curb. But out the wing mirror, I can see exactly where the curb is and exactly where the car is. This works everywhere. I'm now gonna parallel park around this car and show you what it looks like in the mirror. As the curb is over there, I'm gonna have to steer over there. So reverse, have a look round, make sure it's safe. Handbrake off and steer maximum towards the curb. You'll see the car is starting to angle towards the curb. The rear of the car may look like it's touching the curb, but it's nowhere near the curb yet. You will be near the curb when the curb appears around about here in the mirror next to the side of the car. When I have about this much angle, somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees should do it. If you have too much angle, you'll come in too quickly and won't straighten in time. Too little, it'll take you too long to get to the curb and you'll be very far down the road. So about this much angle should do it. Have a look round and I'll come back in a straight line at this angle. So the wheels are straight, but I'm coming back at this angle until the curb appears around about here, maybe a bit closer, about here in the mirror. You can see a little bit of road between the car and the curb. That's good because as you take the angle off, you are gonna get a bit closer to the curb. I'm gonna steer away from the curb now fully so that I straighten the car and you'll see the car will gradually become parallel with the curb. And that's about there. There we go. Straighten the wheel and job done. I now want to reverse this car in between these two walls through that passageway. Let's see what this mirror shows us. Well, that's not very helpful. How about this mirror? Ah, oh, that's better. I can see the passageway and this wall is really quite far away. So I'm going to steer towards that wall, steering maximum that way because that's where the wall is. So reverse gear, handbrake off, look round, make sure it's safe and steering towards the wall. You see I'm getting closer to the wall. I'm going to check the other side now to see if there's a gap opening up and there is, so that's good. I think I need to open up this gap more because the gap on the other side is bigger. And I'll try and get them about even, around about here. So now the gap between the car and the wall is about even on both sides. So I'm gonna straighten the wheel now. I'm not gonna try and straighten the car, I'm just gonna straighten the wheel and come back in a straight line towards the beginning of the passageway. When I'm at the beginning of the passageway, then I can straighten the car. So I have another look around, make sure it's safe, come back. When I'm at the beginning of the passageway, which is around about here and I can tell I'm there because the beginning of the passageway is at the side of the car near the door handle on this car at the side there so I know I'm at the entrance. Now I want to straighten the car and to straighten the car I need to get this side of the car towards this wall because it's pointing away and I tend to look at the side I'm going towards. So if I'm going towards this wall I'm going to mainly look at this side because that's what I'm going to hit as that's what I'm going towards. But I'll still look at this side every so often to make sure I'm going to miss what I need to miss. So, still in reverse, looking round, steering towards the wall, making sure I won't hit it. Comparing the other side, that's opening, that's looking good. Comparing the two, and now I'm looking quite straight. So I'll straighten the wheel and come back in a straight line. I'm looking round again to make sure it's safe. And I've got a problem, I've got a bollard on the left here that I don't want to hit. So I need to steer away from this bollard, which means I'm gonna to have to steer towards this wall. Not a problem, I've got some space there. So I'm steering towards the wall, looking at the wall because that's what I'm steering towards. Turn the reverse sensors off. 
and as I get closer to it, you'll see a space will start to open up on the other side between the car and that little bollard back there. Looking good, comparing both sides. And I'll just keep steering to try and keep the car between both objects. Hopefully you can see that bollard. I know the sun is making it hard for the camera to see that. I'm steering around this wall here now, following this wall round, making sure my front doesn't hit the wall at the front as it swings round. That's basically what you do. You look in the mirrors, you can see your car, you can see the objects, and you can see the space between your car and the objects. Then you use your wheel to steer towards the object you want to get closer to. Earlier in the video, I said you can lower the mirrors to help you see the side of the car when you're reversing, and that's true. You can, it is acceptable on the driving test. It's what I do. I don't like stretching my neck like this, so I tend to just lower the mirrors, although I don't have to, I can just stretch my neck. But when you're learning, it takes you a lot longer, so stretching your neck for a long period of time, that can get uncomfortable, and it can cause fatigue when you're trying to learn something. However, when you have lowered the mirrors, when you finish the maneuver, remember to put them back. That's the danger of doing this. You leave them down, and of course, if they're down, it's not really good enough for your normal driving. Also, looking at your mirrors only isn't good enough because there's other places where people could get to you from. And you've got to take responsibility when you're driving to see somebody or something before it gets to you. Be it a pedestrian, cyclist, car, ET, you've got to see them before they get here. So a 360 degree check, often enough that you will notice someone or something before it has a chance to reach you. Then you've got to deal with it appropriately. So if you're getting out of their way, well, acknowledge them. You know they're there, continue. If you're getting in their way, then you must stop and give way. You may have been told that you're not allowed to use your mirrors for accuracy and that you must always be looking out the back window. And that's not true. Mirrors are brilliant for accuracy. That's how highly skilled drivers reverse in difficult areas or how they reverse difficult vehicles like a bus or a truck. They can see where they're going in the mirrors. If you're only looking out the back as well, well, you're missing other important areas like your blind spots and the front when you reverse the front swings. So you've got to be aware of what your front's gonna hit as well as the back and the sides, all around, 360. Well, I hope this video helps. If you think it does, please give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for insurance, check out Conningwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, Collingwood can help because you can do so without affecting their policy. And at the moment, via the link, there's up to 35% off and a £20 Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, check out confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from different insurers to see who's cheapest. And you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.